What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to build a cross platform calculator app in Python using the package called flat, which you can run then on Windows on Linux on Mac on iOS and on Android. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to build a simple calculator app in Python that is going to be able to run on multiple different platforms on all desktop systems on iOS and on Android. And for this, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the terminal and we're going to install the package flat. So pip or pip three install flat F L E T. And then we're going to move to our working directory. In my case, it's going to be this one. And in here now we're going to run the following command flat create and then the project name calc app, for example, and then we can move into this directory. And we're going to see that we have a main py file and then some other stuff like a requirements, uh, txt and also a readme. Uh, we're going to focus here on the code. And um, what you can see here is already the basic structure, we have an import flat sft, which is just the alias. Um, and then we have a main function that takes a page as a parameter. And then to this page, it adds a safe area with a text, it's not really important. In this case, we're just going to replace this here with a pass. Uh, and then it just runs the application. And as I said, this can then be compiled to an Android app, it can be compiled to a uh, or it can be built into an iOS app, you can run it on the web, you can run it on Linux, Windows, and so on. It's cross platform because it's based on flutter. So we're going to build a simple calculator application. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to say, page dot title is going to be and then we're going to call this calculator app. And then we're going to just say page update. And what we want to do now is we want to define a function that can be called by the different buttons, uh, which handles the button click. So we're going to say def button click. And this button, uh, button click will get an event as a parameter. Now, before we implement this function, it's important to also have something that this function can work with. So the idea is we want to have different buttons and the buttons should um, add stuff or do stuff with the content of a text field. So we want to have a text field where we have the calculation. And then when we press equal, we want to have the result of the calculation. And uh, because of that, we're going to define here now the txt, or let's call it txt result is going to be equal to a flat text field. Now the important thing here is that we want to make this text field read only the reason we want to make this uh, read only is because we're going to use a very simple approach for evaluation. We're just going to call the eval function. The eval function in Python is not very safe to use because basically you can pass code to it, and it executes it. So it's already quite risky to do that. However, if you don't allow for any input, if you don't allow for um, manual user input, if you just allow numbers and calculation symbols, this should be fine, at least for our purposes here. So we're going to say first of all, text align is going to be equal to ft text align, right. And then we want to say expand equals one, this basically makes it responsive so that we can also run it on the phone without having an, an unusable user interface. And then the important thing read only equals true. So that is our text field. And now in our button click function, we're going to say if e control text is equal to and now we have two special buttons that we need to handle differently. Those two buttons are the C button, the clear button and the equal button, those two buttons have an action, all other buttons basically just add content to the text field. So we're going to say now if the control text is clear, all we have to do is we have to set the result um, to an empty string. So txt result value is going to be equal to an empty string in this case, then if the control text is equal to equal sign. So if it's that, we're going to evaluate the result. And this basically means we're going to try to do the evaluation, we're going to say text result value is going to be equal to the string version of eval. So evaluate the following code, this is Python code that is evaluated. Now, Keep in mind, I can show you that in the Python shell. If you have something like 20 minus nine times eight, that is Python code, it's a calculation, but it's also Python code. So calculations themselves are Python code, which is why the eval function works. So string evaluate, and we want to evaluate the result value. So basically evaluate what's part of the text box and then get that value and uh, write it into the text box again. If this fails, for some reason, we're going to just 
set the value of the text box to error. All right. And in all other cases, when I press on numbers, when I press on plus, minus, divided, whatever, it's always just going to add the text of the button to the text box. So we're going to say text result value plus equals, and we're going to add E control text. That is the button click function that will ha handle all the button clicks. Now the buttons themselves are going to be the following. We're going to de uh, define them now here in a list of strings and the strings are going to be the individual rows. So we want to have the uh, one row is going to be seven, eight, nine. Now seven, eight, nine, and then one calculation sign because we want to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we want to have uh, on the vertical one half plus minus times and division. So the next one is going to be uh, four, five, six, and multiplication, then we're going to have one, two, three, and minus, and then we want to have uh, basically zero point C and plus. So point is basically just a comma. Uh, so basically just a decimal point. Um, and then the final row should just be an equal sign. So those are the buttons. And now we're going to add them to the interface by saying for row in buttons, we want to say row controls is going to be an empty list to this list, we're going to add uh, buttons. And we're going to do that like this for button text in row. So for the individual characters here, seven, eight, nine slash, we're going to do the following, we're going to say button equals FT uh, text button. And the value of this text button is going to be the button text. And on click, we want to bind this button to the button click function, we just pass it, we don't call it. Um, and we also say expand one to make the design responsive. Then we add this to the row controls, we append this button to the row controls. And finally, we just say page at FT row, and the controls of this row are going to be the row controls. And guess what the row also has to uh, expand. So it has to be responsive. Finally, we just say page dot add and then txt results. So we just add to the page, this text box with the results and then we start the application. So this should work now on my computer. As you can see, this is the application. And uh, no, for some reason, it doesn't work. What did I mess up? Oh, I know what I messed up at the end of this, I need to also every time, um, actually not here, but at the button click here, what we need to do every time we run this, we need to update the text results. So we need to actually apply the changes. Uh, where is my application now? It's on the other screen, for whatever reason. There you go. Uh, so now I can say 77 uh, or 779 times six plus three, and then I can evaluate this, I can clear, I can say 2.2 .2, uh, plus three is going to be that I think we should also get the floating point error that we get in Python. So if I say 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, I should not get 0 0.3. But yeah, this, this thing here, if you want to know why this happens, I have a video on my channel about this, you can check it out. Uh, but yeah, we have this calculator application, it seems to be responsive. And now what we have to do is we have to just build it for the system that we want to build it for. Now, I have a full video where I go into the explanation of how to build this as an APK file, if you want to build, um, if you want to build it as an Android app, uh, I recommend you watch that video, the basic command is just let me show you that the basic command is just um, you go into the directory of the project and you say flat and then build APK. However, there are some nuances that I won't cover in this video here, because I have a separate video only about this topic. So if you want to know how to build this as a proper APK package, look up that video, what we're going to do here now for the sake of simplicity, just to show you that it works on the phone as well is we're going to say flat run, and then dash dash or actually flat run, I think we need to specify the file and then dash dash Android. Now this is not an APK file that is built. This is just a QR code that I can scan now with my phone uh, to be redirected to a website. 
and then it should open up my flat app and it should, uh, should allow me to use this on the phone. So I think it's not very, you can probably not see it very well. Let me just turn off my eye comfort shield. So this is what the app looks like. Now, of course, you cannot see that, but I can type in the values. It looks good. I can press on calculate and I get the results. So you just got to believe me or you can try it on your own. And this also works when you build it as an APK file. But again, since the process is not trivial, I have a video on this. So check it out. And for the other builds, you can build it for Windows and iOS. But it's uh, yeah, there are some steps to follow there. Maybe I will make videos about uh, these platforms as well, even though I don't have an iPhone or a Mac. But yeah, this is how you build a simple calculator app, a cross platform calculator app with flat in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.